Hey guys, even here and we have a lot of physique updates and a lot of news for this video but I wasn't sure which one to put in the thumbnail, I thought these three would be the most interesting ones and hey, you clicked so it worked. Anyways, let's start this video with Sergio Oliva Jr. physique update, it's not a full physique update but you can see his arms, you can see his shoulders, a little bit of his chest and overall conditioning. Now, what is the impression that most of you get, probably, as well as myself, and that's most likely that he's really full, right? He's really full, he he's really big, and you can see a lot of veins on his body. Now, does fullness mean anything, really? And I don't know if you guys competed before or not, but if you have, I'm sure you know that fullness is definitely not the most important thing coming into the show. Now, I'm sure he's going to deplete right now, it's a depletion week, now he's gonna do a little depletion for a couple of days, then he's going to fill up, um, he's coached by Chris Asito, so they do these kind of protocols, so he will probably be a little bit uh, more conditioned in the end, of course, but at this point he's pretty full, and that looks amazing in the gym, but on the stage, the more depleted, the, the drier you are, the deeper are the separations, and you create the better illusion that you are actually bigger than you are. So, I've gotta say, I am impressed with the mass that he was able to bring in this past off-season, but when it comes to conditioning, at one week out of a show, I'm not that blown away, really. You don't see those deep, super-cut striations, you know? I don't see that, really. The conditioning is not exactly superior to the other guys at this point. I don't know. I'm not sure what we can, what we can actually expect, but I can say that he's very full. Look at the veins. Look at the veins, he's really full. He's gonna be bigger than most of the guys, I know that. He's really huge, he's pretty tall as well, he's over 6 foot, I believe. But, is he going to be the driest guy up there? I don't know, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't really get the impression that he's going to be super shredded. Maybe that's just not the look that he's actually looking for, maybe he wants to be a little bit fuller, on the fuller side, not so much on the most conditioned side of the show, but... Then again, we know that he is super focused this prep, that he made some really good improvements. Chris Asito knows his business. I'm sure that Sergio is suffering. He's doing everything that he needs to do. I have no doubt that this will be his best ever, but how good will it be in this kind of competitive lineup? It's a really competitive lineup. Can he really make a breakthrough at this Arnold Classic by, you know, taking one of the top six spots? That would really prove to the world that he has a potential, that he's a really, really top bodybuilder. Is that going to happen with this conditioning at one week out? I don't think so. I don't see it happening. I'm sorry, guys. I know there is a lot of Sergio Oliva Jr. fans, but I just don't really see it. I don't see the, the, the thin skin, super dry conditioning. Fullness, hell yeah, all day long. But the conditioning, it doesn't really seem that, that insane. You know, and he really needs to be really good to have that kind of placement, top six at the Arnold Classic that is probably more competitive in the last year's Mr. Olympia. We'll see, we'll see in due time. Talking about that top six, I'm sure you have seen this photo before. It's been out there for a few days. I haven't really mentioned it before, but I'm gonna touch on it briefly right now. So, I had Steve Kuklo in top six at this year's Arnold Classic, and I'm changing that prediction. I gave fifth spot to Josh Lenartovic. I'll have to change that, I'll have to change this prediction, and I'm gonna give the fifth spot to uh, Steve Kuklo right here, and Josh, I don't know, I'm gonna put Josh like top 10 or something, because I was really not impressed by his last update, if you guys don't know my reaction on that, go and check one of my previous videos, but it really doesn't look good, you know, considering everything, he is not gonna be at his best, nothing close to his best, but uh, this man right here, he he's always, you know, that kind of guy that nobody, nobody really talks about, you don't really expect him to do great, but he's very consistent, basically. He's pretty conditioned, he has all the muscle, he has the complete physique, he's pretty tall, he's really big, and right now he looks shredded. He looks more conditioned than the Sergio Oliva, for example. Some people have Sergio uh, placing ahead of this guy, I don't really see that happening, let's be realistic. This guy was top 6 at the Mr. Olympia, Arnold Classic, maybe more competitive, but still, I mean, who else is there that he cannot beat? He cannot beat Dexter, I don't see that happening. He cannot beat Bonac and Remy. I don't think he's going to beat Cedric this time around. I'm really expecting Cedric to bring 
somewhat of a better shape than at the Mr. Olympia and he is known for doing that. He always messes it up at the Mr. Olympia, but the other shows he does better and I'm thinking he's gonna do uh, much better at the, the Arnold Classic. It's just a prediction, I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's just a prediction and I have this guy right now at a fifth spot, not Patrick Moore. Patrick Moore or Sergio Oliva or the other guys, they may crack the top six. But, again, I don't have them at a top 6. At top 6 right now, I have Nathan Diasha, who was 7th spot, but because he moved Josh, now I have Nathan there, since he uploaded this. And it's possible that Nathan will even be better than top 6, because look at him. He looks really dry, this photo. He really, really lost a lot of fat and a lot of water lately, in, in a matter of a week, a week or two or something like that. Last time we saw him and his back, he didn't look disconditioned. But this guy, this guy is really, really confident and I'm sure he's working super hard. So he posted this photo with the following caption. Let's read this, it's, it's interesting. Back to the wall, stood tall and ready to fulfill the prophecy. Your boy is coming and he's better than ever. We'll talk about the three lions back home in the UK. But I'm going to be the T-Rex that walks on that stage to show the world the, a new species of bodybuilder. I'm Nathan Diasha, I'm the prophecy, enough said. <laughs> ego on this guy, ego on this guy, he's got some, <laughs> some insecurities, I have to say, I mean, would you imagine Dorian Yates speaking like this about himself? No, no, you wouldn't, he would just come and win and go home and, you know, enjoy his life and do his job and that would be it. This guy, he has some ego and you know what, I like it, I like to see some of this. <laughs> I don't like, uh, maybe I don't like this kind of personality, maybe I wouldn't be best friends with this guy, I wouldn't go for a cup of coffee with him every day, you know, I wouldn't like to have him around in my life all day, all day long, I, you know, you know what I'm saying, but I like to see this occasionally, because this is interesting, these kind of egomaniacs are making the world more interesting place, right, and um, you gotta love it, you gotta love it, I mean, or you hate it, but you have strong emotions about it, so, We'll see how he does, but honestly, based on this physics, he's not gonna win the show, of course. Not just based on his updates, but based on his genetics, really. He's not in the ballpark of Dexter Jacksons or William Bonex or Big Ramis and the other guys. And um, the best case scenario for him, again, top four. I mean, the top three is reserved, long time ago. Top four is the best that anybody else can get. And he can crack the top four, sure, he can beat Cedric, he has beaten him before, he can beat Steve Kuklo easily, if he just brings insane level of conditioning, I don't see that happening, really, but I think it's going to be much better than I expected, and I think it's going to be enough for him to crack the top six. Oh, oh, what do we have here? Well, 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 we have Victor Martinez with a new physique update, and goddamn, look at that back. Look at that back, that's some really good back, look at the lower lat thickness, look at the, the rhomboids, the traps, the conditioning, he's really bringing some really good shape. And look at the caption, coming for the same results as 2007 and 2011, we are here for the win, Arnold Sports, one week out. First, I like that uh, Victor is really no bullshit type of guy, he just says it, one week out. We don't need to assume if this was taken 9 weeks out or 7 weeks out or whatever, he says it 1 week out and I think the other guys should do that as well. Second of all, he claims that he's going to be the same as he was in 2007 and 2011, but that's not gonna happen. And with him, it's not the case like with Nathan, he is not an egotistical maniac, all he's doing really is just hyping himself up a little. He does not really think that he can actually win the Arnold Classic or, you know, place in the top three or whatever. He knows that very well. He He's not here for the win. He knows that. He knows that. But, you know, that's just what you need to say. You don't really have to, but it's much better if you said. Imagine if everybody was like, I'm here for the top six, I'm here for the top four, I'm here to place whatever. It's much more interesting when you have a bunch of guys who all want to win. And you have no idea who is going to win. It's definitely much more interesting. And Victor knows that. And that's what he's doing right here. He doesn't really believe that he's going to win. But but I think he's going to make me wrong. I gave him, I think, third from behind. Right now, I'm thinking he may even do better than that. We'll see. We'll see who else comes off. If some guys come a little bit more off than, than, than I imagine, like Kim Williams, maybe if he comes more water than usual. And I, I don't know, really. I mean, there is a lot of really good young guys so I don't really see that happening, even though Victor looks amazing here, 
you will still be able to notice the lack of conditioning on his uh, lower abdomen, for example. Overall, you can see that old man's skin everywhere. His waist got a lot of a lot thicker. You cannot really see it from the back, but you will be able to see it when he turns around. So, look, Victor is going to look amazing. I have no doubts about that. He's going to give us a great show. But can he really place, you know, high like top six? No way, no way. Let's not let's not joke about it. Top ten, yeah, that that's like the best case scenario. But top six or win the show now. But yeah, he definitely looks amazing, especially considering his age. Again, it's possible that if some guys come a little bit off, he can take them down. He can take them out. Honestly, I can see that happening, but it's not very likely. Even though he looks amazing, the other guys are looking probably better because they are younger, they are more dominant, and, you know, really, really competitive lineup Victor has to um, face at this Iron Classic. So, we'll see what happens, but I'm sure he's going to be better than the last year's Iron Classic, and I'm sure he's going to look amazing. Just amazing, just very, very good. Alright, next we have a little, not really physique, but lag and conditioning update of Steve Lorius. Let's just put it short. Once again, millionth time, he is winning the Iron Classic, it's in the bag, just look at the conditioning, this guy is potential to be the Mr. Olympia, we'll see, we'll see after he wins the Arnold Classic, I'm sure he's gonna do the Olympia, I'm really curious to see him compared to Chris Bumstead, but that's just a big topic, I talked about this many times before, right now, look at the conditioning, admire it, let's go with the next story. Let's check some off-season updates of a couple of top guys, first of all we have Rolly Winkler right here, he says this is what he looks like after lag day. I don't know why, but I'm getting the impression that this is what he looks like all day long. I just really get that impression that Rolly is a really lazy guy when it comes to, you know, resting. Not when he works. When he works, he does his job very diligently and he's a hard worker. But when he has his time off, he just probably likes to sleep and just, you know, spend time like this. No, he's not that kind of a super active guy who enjoys his free time by doing some kind of a hobby or something. That's just the impression that I get based on all I saw, all I, all I, all I've seen so far from Rolly Winkler. I don't know about you guys, but yeah, this is him in the off season. It seems like he's taking some time off. He doesn't look as big as usual. He looks huge. Don't get me wrong. He, he he's a beast, of course. But we've seen a couple of uh, physique updates lately. And looks like he's taking some time off, which is definitely needed for him. He competed a lot in, in the past couple of years. So take a year off, you know, take actually a half a year off, not do the Arnold Classic and just get ready for the, for the Olympia. You know, he, he's qualified. He was top five. Just get ready for the Olympia. And depending on who else shows up, he can actually end up winning it. It's not impossible. Can this man win it again, though? Sean Roden, 2018 Mr. Olympia, with his off-season physique update. What can I say based on this physique update? Well, <laughs> it doesn't look very good. It doesn't look very good. He's actually showing some signs of aging, especially in his face. His skin on his arms doesn't look super young as well. Unfortunately, very unfortunately, I'm a huge fan of Sean Roden myself. I consider him better bodybuilder than uh, Brandon Curry. Unfortunately, it seems like he's a little bit worn out. That's the impression that I get based on these physique updates that I've seen so far. You can see it in his face. He, he looks weary. He looks tired. He looks like he's ready to give it up. I have my sources who train in his gym and they tell me that he doesn't really train very hard. If he really doesn't train very hard and if he doesn't really use uh, a lot of, you know, the stuff, he looks good. But then again, this is Sean Roden, you know. You guys have seen so many times before him being criticized for not looking very good in the offseason. And then, when the showtime happens, he transforms his body so easily. He has super fast metabolism, he can really get conditioned when he wants. So, I'm sure if uh, politically he's clean, if uh, they let go of the charges and if they let him compete again at the Mr. Olympia or the Arnold, I'm sure he can still be the most dominant bodybuilder in the world. At least one of the top guys. I'm sure about that. He still has some time, he is not that old yet. He has a couple of more years in bodybuilding and hopefully, hopefully the problems will be resolved and he will be back on that stage. We'll see what happens. Let's give it some time. We have a training video of Kai Green and uh, you guys know that Kai is posting a lot of videos and most of them are throwbacks. But I don't know about you, but I have the eye for these things and I can say that this is recent based on the way his arms are looking. 
I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'm not wrong. He looks like he looked in that previous physique update of his. And um, he's training, so he never really stopped training, and that's interesting. It's interesting that he stayed this big. He didn't really lose the size. He kind of lost the shape, but not the size. Does this mean that he's going to compete ever again? It's a question. It's a big question. and I'm not going to even predict anything. I don't know. <laughs> Let's go with the next story. The next one is about Flex Wheeler. Not off-season update, but just a retired bodybuilder who has been through a lot of trouble and he posted a bicep shot. You can see that it, you know, it's, it's not good. It's not good. You can read the caption as well, but I'm not going to read it aloud. It's, it's pretty disturbing. All I can say is what this man been, has been through. Oh, it's, it's not good. It's not good. He has been to, through hell at this point. And it's really sad, and I'm really sorry for that. But he's still holding it. He's still, you know, there. He's still there with us. He's still showing up. He's posting stuff. He's doing the interviews. And I can really respect that. He's the ultimate legend of bodybuilding. One of the greatest bodybuilders of all time. And he's showing us how strong his mind actually is. These bodybuilders, these bodybuilders really have some really strong mindsets. And after they retire, after their bodies let go, their minds are still there. After you do so many years of bodybuilding at that level, after you, after you torture your body so much and you go through all that hell just for a trophy, what else can break you after that? You're basically invincible. So props to Flex for being so optimistic at this point after having so much trouble. Just, you know, I wish him all the best and I know that if he stays positive like this, positive things will happen and everything will be fine. It's just a matter of time. And for the end of this video, we have a little off-season update of Hassan Mustafa. Watch out for this guy. He's going to be the next beast, the next big thing. And he is doing the St. Louis Pro in about seven weeks. Yeah, he doesn't have the best structure, but that's basically the same thing that they were saying about Phil Heath. So I'm sure this guy is going to improve a lot at this season. And uh, eventually, eventually, this guy is going to be a huge bodybuilder in terms of success. So watch out for him. And that's gonna do it for this video guys, comment down below whatever you have on your mind, I'm gonna try to read all the comments and to respond to the interesting ones. Also, please like the video and if you want to see more bodybuilding content and uh, the best Arnold Classic coverage in a week, subscribe! All the best guys and bye bye!